Democrats are now all over the map when it comes to how they feel about how their party should proceed forward. Listen to this. I am for Joe Biden. I'm going to tell him what I uh, really feel, uh, but I will tell you this. I'm going to tell you what it's not, and it's not to say to him, get out of the race. This is not about one night. This has been a problem for a year. I salute President Biden. I just feel that it's time for him to step aside. Joe Biden is our nominee. Joe Biden is our leader. I will proudly be supporting the president. Do you think he should drop out of the race? Yeah, absolutely. I believe that there are stronger options out there for Democrats. We have a stable of folks that I think could do a better job. I think that, again, he's our nominee. And so unless he makes a different decision, I'm on board and I'm supporting the president. I Again, he's been good for the country. Fourth, one says drop out, one says stay in. Right. So let's look at some hypothetical matchups. First off, 538 says the approval rating on Joe Biden is 37.5. Harris is 39.4. So you can't automatically say Harris is least popular. She's getting more popular than Joe Biden, but that's not saying much. Michelle Obama would be the strongest foe against Donald Trump, but she's not going to run. Word is, though, she is raising money for a possible wow. Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket. Harris against Trump. Trump wins. Newsom against Trump, Trump by seven. Whitmer against Trump, that's going to be, yeah, that would be five. Uh, and the governor of Kentucky, Bashir, against Trump, it is Trump by four. Uh, Pritzker does a terrible job in Illinois. He loses by six. So these are some of the, the people, like Governor Shapiro, not up there, that you would think might be likely if there was no Joe Biden. If he had stepped aside, these are the people that probably would have thrown their hat in the ring. The question is, they could still throw their hat in the ring in four years. Why would they jump in against Donald Trump in the next four months? Because you, once you're a loser, you're a loser. Yeah, but Brian, and, also to that point, which I, I think and it's got to be Kamala Harris, which I think is the best point because some of the Republicans wish they would have stayed out of it. They could have just waited. Right. But they That's tried. They were allowed. They tried. That's they tried. an open party. That's exactly right. But why would Joe Biden get out? Looking at that, it's not like the alternatives are going to be better for the party right now. At that's least, what, it's, a, that's what the at least, at least it's a dead heat between the former president. I mean, the latest polling shows that Trump is up plus six. But at least there's a fight to be had between Joe Biden Well, he's and, got the and thousand Trump. delegates, and it's up to him. Uh, and they're going to rush. Evidently, they're going to go for July 18th. They're looking to just give him the nomination, quickly get it. move it up early. But the other thing that I think is underappreciated is that Joe Biden's universe, you think he's got the whole White House, he's got the whole party, he's got four people. He's got his wife, he's got a sister, he's got Jeff Zeitz and, and Ron Klain and a couple other names. And those are the only people that talk to him. So he's able to say it insulated. Bubble and then when you find out, he gave that speech when he first got the job and he said, you know, if you treat a subordinate uh, without respect, <laughs> you will be fired. Word is, people are afraid to approach him. He bites everybody's head off. They're afraid to brief him on things he doesn't right. like. Yeah. When they disagree with his recommendation, he They're screams just and he yells. So they shake around him. Right. So well, what kind of White House is this? <laughs> We're run by four people who are friendly with a guy that can only work between 10 and 4. Right. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I, look, looking at the poll, you know, I, and I think that's right. If Michelle Obama wanted to run against Donald Trump, she would beat him, uh, ultimately. Until she get. got it. Exposed in right, it. right. But the other uh, names on that ball uh, on that sample right there, you know, a lot of people don't know who Whitmer or Bashir or Pritzker are just by r name recognition. It's interesting. Uh, there's a story in the New York Times right now about how you know big donors. Uh, are going to be watching the polls over the last two weeks. They started early to try to force him out, and that kind of fizzled. Uh, but the American Bridge had a call yesterday, with an, and only a dozen donors spoke out. Uh, only one person was supporting, uh, was supporting Joe Biden. Some donors are calling Gavin Newsom, saying, will you get in? And apparently some other donors are calling the, the top guy over at J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon. Jamie. Will you be the savior? In the past, this is a pipe said, dream. Listen, he has said in the past, I'm not going to run, but it was before Thursday. Keep in mind, Thursday, the debate revealed yeah, no, everything. Th but that this changed everything. This hypothetical matchup uh, proves that Democrats have no other option. They have no, no other path forward. I mean, Michelle Obama is not going to run uh, with four we don't months think. to go. And the other thing is that the Biden Harris 
campaign, that money is theirs. It doesn't transfer over to any other it candidate. It could be just hers. Right. So but that's the, what's going on but, with the Democrats, but also other polling shows that Trump is so far ahead right. of Biden on the issues outside of the performance. He is up 20 points when it comes to the economy and immigration, and those are the top two issues that Americans are focusing on right now. Uh, another, this CNN poll also shows that President Biden's approval rating is at 37%. There, right. there is a lot to learn from this situation. I hope the press, the Democrats, learn a lot of lessons from this. First of all, don't lie to the American people. Don't pretend like people are crazy because the truth eventually comes out. Number two, don't usurp the process of the primary system. When vo voters have a right, when, when there were 70% of, of Democrats saying they wanted a different candidate, they should have gave them a primary process. They wouldn't be in this situation if they would allow the debate to happen. If Joe Biden won, right. great. The third thing is the press. You can't cover for political parties, even if you don't like the other guy. There were stories for years now, but you guys did not run it. You guys have seen the president, just like we have seen. He's been spaced out in meetings, uh, not remembering mm -hmm. things, shuffling all over the place. You called for the 25th amendment with Donald Trump when there was no reason to do right. so. Yeah. Over 200 times, he gave you two medical exams and that still wasn't enough. Right. So do your job and you don't have to wait to the end of the process but you know, to start talking about replacing but your But you know, you know why he got it? He got it because the midterms were not a red wave and he got it because they thought for sure if Trump's the nominee and they predicted correctly, they thought he would be, it's going to be all about Trump and he could just sit back, mm -hmm. do his job, let the surrogates work. They didn't think it was going to collapse. They didn't think Trump would be this strong. They didn't think lawfare would fail uh, so Very epically good. as it had to this point. And now all of a sudden, look around and said, uh, everything we counted on has fallen apart. Right. And Trump is not going to give it to you. Trump is not going to turn around and do something that's going to change the no. narrative. You tried to do it with immunity, also underappreciated. After his failure at the debate, they went four days and tried to go business as usual. They put him out there. And that got really that. infuriated. Never reached right. out to Congress or leaders. That infuriated right. people. And that's busy. why well, it's happening. Spe uh, Brian, speaking of congressional leaders, uh, you know, they are furious that he has not reached out to them. According to Axios, he has not spoken to Hakeem Jeffries or Chuck Schumer. Uh, although the New York Times says they think that Hakeem Jeffries talked to him last night. And I think Schumer but, went over there yesterday. Uh, it, it's not in the Times. So ultimately, think about what we're seeing. We're seeing they, they've uh, circled the wagons. But this is, ex you know, there, to your point, there are four people around Joe Biden. This is exactly as it was four years ago. Keep in mind, when he was running for president, he was in the basement yes. the entire time. Only they four people happen. saw him. What were his, When he would go out in public, it was on Zoom. Things go haywire, oh, we lost the connection. So these people have known for a very long time that this guy is not the and guy we nothing. thought he was. Right. And suddenly, now there are stories, and it's a couple of Democrats have said the dam is broken because there are those 25 who may send that letter if Joe goes a little shaky. But now, people who have worked with him in the Senate for decades are starting to tell stories about, you know, I was at this party and I saw Joe do this. Or I remember I was in the Oval Took Room where enough. I saw that. But they are revealing to reporters embarrassing things about Joe Biden. And it's not going to help him. It's just going to work. Yeah, so worse. that is all the news that's going on with President Biden. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.